yet another random budget dual motor electric scooter or the beginning of a brand new era. Kukidin G3 Pro arrives with 2.4 kW total power, 80 km range and specs that make it hard to believe that all of this fits within a price of $1500. Is that even possible? Let's inspect! Just look at that, feels like they finally did it, that's a brand new from Cool Kidding called the G3 Pro and I'm super excited about it because it feels like they finally did the best value dual motor off-road electric scooter of the year. And by the way, nice to meet you, Michael this is my name and this is exactly why we are here, because we want to discover all the strengths but also all the weaknesses about this brand new electric scooter and figure out whether that's the right choice for you. So we're inspecting. As a starter, a good idea to talk about the competition, VZ10 Plus is likely the closest rival in terms of budget and features. You can probably think of Duothrone, Cabo Mantis and other popular off-road oriented brands. On the channel, I've already tested the off-road oriented Nanrobot LS7 Plus and Varla Eagle One, both being more expensive, however. Once you order your Kukirin G3 Pro, this is how it should look like when the box arrives. Kukirin usually includes two layers of cardboard, not this time though. Note, this is a very heavy electric scooter and while you can possibly lift this up alone, I would strongly recommend getting some help during the unboxing and the setup procedures. To save yourself some hassle, open the box from the bottom and pull it upwards. This is the easiest and most reliable way to begin the setup. There are some accessories included, the user guide of course, a super cheap pump, tool set and of course the charger. In order to get all of this riding ready, you will have to mount the handlebar, it is based on 4 hex screws and should take you no more than 10 minutes. Make sure to additionally examine the brakes, the tires, most of the joints, make sure that during the transportation there haven't been any unpleasant surprises. It will also help you to better understand the geometry and the purpose of most of these components. It also helped me to discover that the rubber pad on the board is not well glued, but don't worry, Kukirin usually fix such kind of quality mistakes with the next revisions. For instance, they did notice me complaining about the lack of turn signals with the M5 Pro module and added this to the next patches. Design-wise, the scooter feels solid, rugged, off-road looking and adventure ready. This scooter is not a toy and can be very dangerous because we talk about top speeds of above 50 km per hour. Hey, this one kind of kicked off the revealing of most interesting specs, like the top speed which is actually 65 km per hour, each wheel has a 1200 watt motor, 23 amp hour removable battery which lasts up to 80 km per charge, there are 4 arm shock absorbers, hydraulic brakes, 10 inch off-road pneumatic tires, turn signals, 11 grade lighting system, IP54 waterproof rating, a nice LCD screen and weight of almost 40 kilograms. Possibly the new budget heavyweight electric scooter champion, at least that's what the specs tell to me. But we have to thoroughly check everything because you know that good specifications do not necessarily convert into really superb overall performance. And if somebody tells you that this is the best electric scooter ever, uh, this would be ridiculous, because Kukirin have always been in the search for the best possible value, therefore some corners have been cut and you don't have the most premium parts, but most of them are at very decent quality. For instance, we have in total 2.4 kilowatts of power, that's a huge amount of power, be careful, get some good protective gear, actually a full face helmet is going to be a much better option. You have the choice between single motor and dual motor mode. Uh, we have very reliable braking. It's the first time Kukirin use hydraulic brakes in a model of theirs. Very responsive suspension, which is also upgradable. And battery, which offers range up to 80 kilometers, at least in theory. So, sounds like it has all that it takes to bring you on a cool, really fun ride. Let's try it out. Let's begin the detailed component walkthrough with what everybody wants to know. 
acceleration and motor performance. Gonna share with you what I personally liked and did not enjoy that much. Acceleration is crazy fun when in dual motor mode. If you've ever been driving an electric car, especially a Tesla, feeling is kind of familiar. I've always been rooting for dual motor setups. Yes, it makes the scooter a little heavier, but it's totally worth it. This would spread the load, add less stress on the motor and also guarantees longer life for both. Also delivers more power if we compare it to a single motor with equivalent wattage. I really believe that Kukirin could have thought about an entirely new product line for this model because it is incomparable in terms of performance to their previous ones. The not so good part, besides the increased weight and price, would be the not too gradual acceleration via the throttle lever. It was way too responsive for my taste and looks like there is no way fine-tuning it. You will for sure get used to it, but I'd prefer a better linear throttle over here. The battery, being the next VIP member on the list, is also a nice surprise. No, it's not yet with Samsung or LG made cells, quite unfortunately, but hey, this actually is a removable battery. Yes, this weird lock mechanism allows you to lift up the deck and access the battery pack. Good news, this 52 volt 23 amp hour pack is made of 18,650 cells, which are the most commonly used these days. And the fact that you have easy access to take it out means that not only replacements, but also upgrades are gonna be easy to make. After testing it for a while, I can share that if you don't accelerate aggressively, the dual motor mode is going to consume about the same in terms of battery life. Concerning the range that I got, in mostly off-road environments, doing a lot of tricks, pushing to the limits from time to time, it has brought me close to 35 kilometers from my starting point, with the last 8 or 9 kilometers where I really did behave because I wanted to make it home on wheels and not by feet. This is quite an achievement during the winter, with low temperatures and 90 kilo weighing rider. If you go for single motor mode, avoid going up hills, ride with around 30 to 35 km per hour and use cruise control most of the time, you can bring this achievement beyond 50, even 55 km. With my personal weight, I doubt that the promised 80 km range is achievable, but for a lighter person with good training and enough of patience, this may actually work. I'm really impressed with the suspension integrated. It could have been a lot cheaper than that. And the best news, it's upgradable. If you use air-backed hybrid springs, it can feel superb. But even as it is, with the original setup, the scooter runs very smoothly and you can notice the great responsiveness when riding on it on not that flat terrain. It's hard to wish for more at this price point, and in terms of comfort, it all felt very similar to Varla Eagle 1, which is about the same as Zero 10X series, if you're familiar with those. If not, make sure to watch the review about it. The disc brakes are also quite a big deal with the G3 Pro, mineral oil-based, model is by XOD, and these are among the most affordable hydraulic brakes with integrated power cutoff function in the early days of 2023. Right now, I'd say their performance is superb and they feel close to the quality of Zoom brakes, but it's a good idea to ask me how they perform in the long run because this scooter model is still quite fresh and we know that outstanding products shine after prolonged periods of use, so go to the comments and check this out. The tires are also a strong side. Kukirin advertised them as professional off-road tires. They've been indeed great for going fast in the fields or aggressively braking and decreasing speed. Also, it's very unlikely these to get any punctures and are not that bad about riding on flat terrains like asphalt. The mud guards are cheap and lightweight. The deck is very wide and comfortable. The folding mechanism, the same as the G2 Max, looks durable well built, the whole construction of the scooter is looking beautiful, especially the lights. Riding at night is a pleasure, with the front light being particularly bright. There are turn signals, so that you can let others know in case you want to go left or right. Last but not least, a few words about the controls and the handlebar. You can see here the lever, switch between single and dual motor mode, 
the light switch, there's electronic horn, and of course the signature for cookie ring display with loads of information and visibility even under direct sunlight. What is more impressive is that you can access the advanced P settings through a triple press of this button. And here you can access a lot of settings to adjust and fine tune. I enjoy the stock defaults, but if you decide to go for upgrades, you may eventually need to adjust some of those. To make the picture more complete, I want to show you some areas that may need some improvement. The carrying hook needed some tightening, at least on my unit, because it doesn't stay firmly, which can lead to the scooter falling down while you carry it. And you can imagine what a 40 kilo brick can cost to your ankle or foot if falling down. The stem is not adjustable in terms of height, perfect for my size of 188 cm, but might be not optimal for yours, so check whether it's a good fit. The cruise control was not on by default and it doesn't have audible announcement, so I often have to stare at the monitor in order to confirm that it was actually on. You don't want to do that when riding at high speeds. Also, no audible announcement for the turn signals and I found myself often forgetting mine, which can bring some confusion on the road and can also put you in challenging situations. I wish there was an easy way to change the balance in terms of load for each one of the motors, but no such thing yet. And once again, for this model, no smartphone app available, but given the fact that you have access to the advanced settings, this probably is not such a big deal. In the end, I totally loved what I've experienced with the G3 Pro by Kukirin. My personal opinion is that this is their best model up until now, with their most advanced setup. And I would say the highest grade of parts from all the portfolio so far. And the good part is it, it gives you those positive adrenaline vibes because of the awesome acceleration. And while it's probably not the best dual motor electric scooter setup, I think that it's the best value dual motor setup of 2023 given it's 2.4 kilowatt total power that's not a joke make sure to be well equipped because accidents may happen and with a top speed of more than 60 kilometers per hour it can be really dangerous so that's everything about today's episode and in case you have some questions or you want to share something or probably you want to give a suggestion for a better value setup which i doubt exists but you can try me out in the comment section below you know how to reach out as usual more information about the scooter more information about how you can support the channel and of course possibly a discount if i manage to squeeze such from cooking you're gonna find it in the video description area thank you very much for watching it's been such a pleasure i'm michael i look forward to seeing you in the next video bye